are getting ready to do a fly out next week. We always do a quick once over on the airplane. Had to do an oil change, so doing our inspection. We found a slight exhaust leak coming out of the number two cylinder. Unfortunately, pulled the exhaust off and there's a lot of blow through between the exhaust and the head of the cylinder. So we unfortunately are going to be changing the cylinder. Everything about the cylinder is good. Compressions are good, valves are good. So it kind of hurts. You can send them out to have them shave it down. But at this point, it's an old cylinder. Why not just put a rebuilt one on? So we're gonna show the process of changing the cylinder out. This is in no way instructional. This is just to kind of see how cool it is to see the engine come apart and see it back up in the air. Let's see how it goes. On every drop in a spray paint haze Every note in your serenade No obstructions, we're ready to start actually taking the cylinder stuff apart. So first we're gonna pull out the rocker arms so we can take out the push rods. Um, so to do that, thankfully it's literally free floating. But since my fingers aren't long enough and strong enough, I'm just taking a socket or something. And just really push it. Now this would drop if you weren't ready for it. It's been a couple days, we're back at the hangar. We were on the fence about just changing the back cylinder, but the fact that it's like a six week wait time for overhauls and there's nothing wrong with that back cylinder, it would be pretty pointless to pull it off. So thankfully saved us a bunch of time with keeping the plane up. That cylinder is great. We have the other overhaul cylinder done. We're just gonna check the gapping on the rings, make sure all the rings are gapped correctly. We'll put the rings on the piston, get the piston back on the engine. We'll do one final inspection inside the crankcase. You can get a pretty good shot of the cam. You can see everything. So take some photos and uh, we'll be sliding the cylinder on. Piece of cake. Cylinder is on. One of our kind of cool methods is we've always videotaped doing it so that you don't later on second guess, like, did I put the piston pin in? Are the caps in? To where like, yeah, they're in, they're good. We're gonna go through the torque now. Light combing is very specific on 90% 50 weight oil and STP oil additive, or Parker thread lube, or 30 weight oil with 40% Parker thread lube. So we're going with option one. One of the items you have to check is the dry tappet clearance, which is what Cliff is doing here. Essentially, you drain the oil out of the little tappets, put the push rods in, and is testing the rockers with the feeler gauge to see if they have the proper gapping. 
The intake was within range, but the exhaust was slightly too tight. Not every cylinder is going to have the valve in the exact same position to the thousands of an inch, so it's not uncommon to have to order a different length, which is what we ended up doing. There's five different pushrod lengths that basically it's for this engine. We had a dash 13, we ordered a dash 12 from Spruce, came the next day, slid it in, the gap was now perfect in the range. The final steps of all of it really, just put the baffles back on, put the exhaust back on, put the intake tubes back on. We cleaned and gapped all the spark plugs. Test runs we did of the engine outside was successful. We followed what Gibson does, the place that we got the cylinder overhauls from. They wanted three two minute runs with 15 minutes of spacing in between. We did those, checked for leaks, checked all the torques, and then I would cowl it back up, put the engine heater on it. One of the benefits to Bayport is from the hangar to where I was going full power is probably a 30 second taxi. We're in a weird spot here with the airspace so we're under a 700 foot shelf by Islip. So a bunch of elaborate plans were made, called up New York approach, denied. Call back in five minutes, remain clear to Charlie. So we ended up just headed out towards Brookhaven Airport where we can just circle above, um, took every safety precaution we can, and that was it. A pretty cool thing that I don't think a lot of people realize because it just doesn't make much sense, but you get all your power at the top of the curve. So to break in the cylinder, you want to operate at 75% power. On an engine that has a red line of 2,700, at 2,500 feet, 2,600 RPM is 75% power. Um, so you are like right at the top. And this airplane cruising around was 130 miles per hour, basically, on the airspeed. Instead of burning seven gallons per hour, we were burning 12 gallons per hour. The reason of doing that is to really put the rings through a good heat cycle. And that initial like first 30 minutes is the most important. That's why you quick taxi out, quick takeoff, and you run at that high power setting. Beyond that, your fear is really glazing the cylinders. And if you did glaze, you're essentially putting like a coating of oil in all the little grooves on the cylinder. Not something you want to do. Still got more time to go. So we're going to keep flying it. We're really just flying along the beach between here and Montauk and down the beach towards Jones Beach. Uh, once we get about seven to 10 hours, we'll do an oil change. We'll put regular oil back in, check the screens, and should be good to go. Thank you.